Hello, I'm Daniel, and I have three personalities. One of them is a regular Daniel, the one who's talking to you right now. Another one is depressed Daniel, and the third one is Daniel the Maniac. All combined, these three personalities make me a patient with bipolar 1 disorder, also known as manic depressive disorder. When people hear these three words, manic depressive disorder, they imagine at once a maniac from horror movies walking around with a machete and murdering everyone he can see. It's funny because it is as far from the reality as possible. The only person such a patient can harm is himself, which is due to depression episodes that last for a very long period of life and deprive you of any hope. But let me tell you in detail how I found it out. I was 14 when I had my first depression episode that lasted for very long. It started in November. At first, I thought that it was a usual November blues that would pass in no time. Strangely, it didn't. It went worse and worse. I was sure Christmas would fix it all as it had always been my favorite time of the year, but it didn't. It felt like someone had switched off all the colors in the world and you're living in black and white. Nothing gave me joy, nothing gave me pleasure or motivation. At some point I was struggling not even to go to school, but to get up from the bed. What's the reason to do it if there's no hope and no future? When I'm out of depression, such thoughts seem ridiculous to me, but when you're depressed, you are absolutely convinced that life is a vortex that brings you straight to hell. Obviously, my parents got worried at once. They pulled me out of the bed and brought me straight to the doctor who diagnosed me with clinical depression. That was really wise of them because when someone is depressed and if you leave him alone, you never know what it can finish with. The doctor prescribed me antidepressants. They didn't work 100%, but they towed my depression down a bit. That was anyway a huge relief. I finally returned back to school, which was a huge step forward because I was failing everything. In April, my depression passed. I hoped that it was finally it, one strange episode that wouldn't be repeated. I was living my normal life and was slowly forgetting the horror I've survived until one day my manic episode started. This is something impressive to tell. Every patient lives his mania in a different way. Someone starts spending money uncontrollably. Others start partying all day long. You don't even notice how things change. You receive a flow of uncontrollable energy and you try to discharge yourself in some way. You feel like a superman who can handle anything. Climbing a 40 foot tree, on my way. Telling your school principal or boss everything you think about him, I'm a hero. Winning a million bucks at a casino, I feel lucky. I didn't realize something was wrong with me. In my case, I didn't want to do anything bizarre or dangerous. Point is, I started seeing signs everywhere. Please don't laugh, I know it's ridiculous, but when you're manic, you don't reason. I saw the signs of some global conspiracy that suddenly became clearly visible everywhere I looked. I chatted to my neighbor, for example, and felt there was something utterly suspicious about him. Then I went to the library, made some research on the internet, and realized that his speech was somehow a clear reference to some historical conspiracy theories. I started checking his social connections and somehow arrived to the idea that my neighbor took part in the whole mystic group. There I tried to understand their purposes and stuck even more. From outside, it looks really creepy. I drew an enormous chart on the wall of my room with all the connections and ideas I've found, and I have wasted endless notebooks to write all my findings. If you've seen A Beautiful Mind, you can imagine what it looks like even if the main character has a different disease. When my parents saw me like that, they again brought me to the doctor, who that time was much more worried. I got my new diagnosis and new pills that were supposed to ease my state. Well, you need time to understand what pills work for you. After I got diagnosed with bipolar one, I already have three periods of depression and two manic attacks. The worst part of it is that you can't control it. You can just take your medicine and pray that this time it will work and you won't have it because this kind of thing is cyclic. When you get a depression, even if you understand that it's just a disease and it'll pass soon, you can't get rid of the feeling that everything is hopeless and pointless. On the other hand, when you're in mania, you don't realize it properly. Your mind can't stop to think about it. You have a million thoughts at the same time and you desperately try to control them. It is incredibly tiring, but surprisingly, I've found a bonus in it. I have an ambition to become an author of thriller stories, but I've always had difficulties in finding a perfect plot. Now, when I turn back to normal from my manic episodes, I start analyzing my crazy conspiracy investigations. My diagrams and diaries are an endless source of ready-made criminal plots for years and years ahead. Somehow, mania wakes up forces of your imagination you didn't know you had.
Now, I'm living my life not knowing which of the Daniels will be in the spotlight next. I have to wait and look for the medicine that will keep me stable. In the meantime, as a regular Daniel, I'm trying to write some thriller stories, and they come out pretty well. I'll soon try to publish them. Wish me good luck for my medicine and for my writing. Share this story and leave a comment if you know other people with bipolar disorders. It's also important to raise the awareness about people with such a condition, so like this video if you agree.